Today we're going to talk about two adults in their 30s who went to check out some live music in Philadelphia and disappeared when they left the bar. Today we're going to talk about Richard Patron Jr. and Danielle Imbo's disappearance. This is a disappearance from Philadelphia. Let's talk a little bit of background information on each of these individuals. Danielle was in her mid-30s. I think she was 34 when she disappeared. She was married at the time to this man named Joe Imbo. They were in the middle of getting divorced. Joe supposedly had met someone at the Super Bowl on the plane and he wanted to be with this person. There was also a point, I think it was the trip to the Super Bowl, that Joe left Danielle and their son, who was only a toddler at the time of the disappearance, he was about 18 months old, Joe Imbo Jr., homesick and he didn't take care of them and he just left. So there was obviously tension in the marriage and that definitely sounds like some shady character by Joe. Danielle grew up loving music. She was a big music fan. She had a big music, uh, one of her big musical inspirations was Janis Joplin. I believe she modeled her singing voice after Janis Joplin and, and she was told they had a similar style singing voice, kind of a raspy voice. Danielle was seemed to be really into art. She had like a tattoo. She was just a kind of an artsy chick. I couldn't find a lot of information about Joe Imbo, her, her husband at the time, when they were currently going through the divorce, going to the Super Bowl. That would be expensive. So I, I believe he had money. But Joe wasn't the one who disappeared, Richard Patron was, along with Danielle. Richard Patron was a single guy, he had a, a daughter who was about 14 at the time of his disappearance. He, his family had a bakery, he grew up in the bakery, he loved baking, he, that's actually still what he was currently doing. He was uh, working as a baker at the family bakery. He was also into music, he liked Bruce Springsteen, he was a Philadelphia Flyers fan, I saw one comment that said they played hockey together, so he, he played, looks like he played some ice hockey. So let's take it to the beginning of 2005. Richard and Danielle started seeing each other and were dating. They had actually known each other since high school. Time of their disappearance, Danielle and Joe were separated at the time. Danielle and Richard were seeing each other, but Joe was not happy about this. He actually called Richard and, and threatened him, saying, stay away from my wife probably other nasty comments. They were still technically married. Right around the beginning of 2005, Danielle and Richard stopped seeing each other, stopped dating, because Danielle wanted to focus on finalizing her divorce with her current husband, Joe. So they stopped seeing each other around the beginning of 2005. And they were working on, Danielle and Joe were working on finalizing their divorce. Danielle was upset during the, her divorce. She was chain smoking and she lost a considerable amount of weight just with the smoking and probably not eating and stress. Danielle, during the time of her separation, worked at a mortgage company, generally from home from what I've read. So let's take it to the day of February 19th of 2005. That's a Saturday, it's a Saturday night. Richard went to check out some live music and he called his sister and his sister declined, but somehow Danielle found out about it. I think Danielle and Richard's sister were friends. It's most likely that uh, Richard's sister passed the information on, along to Danielle and she agreed to go out with him to see some live music. So Richard picked Danielle up from her apartment in New Jersey and they drove to this place in Philadelphia called Abilene's. And I did some Google research, and I believe this is where Abilene's currently is in Philadelphia as we check out the map. The research I did shows that is as of 2023, Abilene's has been closed and is now a footlocker. I believe it's credible. This area was where the bar was at. It looks like, it looks like kind of a, a nightlife spot. A lot of bars on the street, easy to walk around. Danielle and Richard, they, they get to the Abilene's. When Richard came in, he said they found a great parking spot uh, really close to the venue. They get to the bar and Richard has already friends there, Michelle and Anthony, who were a couple. It possibly explains why Richard wanted uh, another female to go with him. 
because it was a he was meeting a man and uh, you know a, a, a couple in a relationship. They go there. Anthony and Michelle both report Richard and Danielle had a great time. They were even reported kissing. Everything. It, it sounded like a great night. Great night out on the town to watch some live music and do something in the cold Philadelphia weather. Supposedly that night, that night the temperature was about was about 28 degrees. Danielle and Richard left at 11:45 that night, and after when they left, this is where the mystery happens. We have no trace of them. All we know is that we they left around 11:45 p.m. that night. It's believed they were going back to Danielle's apartment in New Jersey, but the next day, Danielle missed her hair appointment. Richard didn't talk to his mom, which they had a really close relationship with. And then later, as the day progressed, turning the afternoon, Joe, Danielle's current husband, brought over their son, I guess, for visitation, or she was supposed to keep to watch him that week. And that's when they were reported to the police. And Joe supposedly had a good relationship with the police, so they were they they were their case was moved to a high priority. Throughout the upcoming weeks, both families searched for their loved ones, and no major clue was ever found. They searched cameras, the water, and they never found any noticeable clue, which makes this case very strange and interesting. As the years have progressed, both families have essentially kind of split with what had happened as we kind of get into the theories. Richard's family largely believes that Joe, Danielle's current husband, who she was going through with a divorce at the current time, believed he orchestrated some kind of hit. Danielle's family largely believes that Richard was somehow connected to crime, debt, they believe he was connected to something and they believe it was Richard's fault. Both families kind of believe that their loved one was specifically targeted, but uh, again, we don't have any concrete leads on that to what the public knows. If you're just looking at this case, it definitely seems like Joe Imbo would be the prime suspect. They were going through a divorce. He had the kind of threatening call to Richard. But Joe was interviewed by the police and he has a really good alibi. He was at some kind of function with police around the night of their disappearance who, and I, I think he was also, I've seen reported far away, around 50 miles away from the scene of Abilene's in Philadelphia. So he has a really good alibi, but a lot of people believe that he could have hired someone or paid someone to do this. The thing that's really interesting about this case is it wasn't planned that these two were gonna meet that night. It was a spontaneous thing that happened within just a couple hours. So either there was a professional hitman hired to take one of these people out and another person just decided to be there is probably most likely what happened. The FBI has joined this case and the FBI largely leans towards that there's a somehow connected to organized crime. Various groups have searched the water in Philadelphia and around the city to see if they could have possibly somehow fallen into water their car, but it would be hard. There, there's no evidence. There was no evidence ever found of that. That's just probably not a good theory. And a lot of the cases and research I've done, they said Philadelphia has a really bad problem with carjacking. It seems like Philadelphia is the place to go to somehow get rid of a car. I don't know how true that is. I did some research. It doesn't seem like Philadelphia has any, it doesn't seem to have a significantly worse problem than any other city with carjackings or car dismantling. Maybe it's a little worse, but that, I, that's just kind of what I've saw in a lot of the reports. But from what I've, the research I've done, it doesn't really appear to be that. That's something that's tough to kind of find a definitive answer on. I think what most people believe and what I ultimately believe that there was a hitman somehow in the car when Danielle and Richard got into it and he told them to drive and then most likely killed him and then they dismantled the car. That's the only case that to me seems to make any kind of sense. It is possible they could have crash into something or got in a body of water, but how is there no evidence to that? I think this case can be solved, but it's just not, someone probably has to talk and you know, that's always really difficult in these cases. I can't really think of a case like this case where you have two people and a truck. The Dodge Dakota truck that Richard drove was, was big. This is not a small car. So in 2023, there hasn't been a real lot of updates, except there's various dive teams searching 
the rivers for cars. And sometimes they do find cars, but they've never found the specific car that they've been looking for. And it's really just a pondering case of how do two people in a huge truck disappear from a major city. And those are kind of all the main facts of the case, and this case is, is cold, and uh, I think it'd be interesting to read the case file of Joe Imbo to see really how much money he had and just to find out more about him. And uh, yeah, that's really everything today. This is definitely a cold case. And um, if you do know of a case similar to this one, uh, listen in the comment section below. And uh, that's going to wrap everything up today. If you want to hear more true crime stories, subscribe to Crime Duh.